my true pleasure to uh, introduce our keynote speaker for this session, and that is Dr. David Navarro, Special Advisor to the Secretary General of the UN uh, on the SDGs. So, David, over to you. Thank you very much indeed, Matt. Uh, good, nice to be able to have another chance to interact, this time as me. Thank you very much indeed, Madam Minister, for your remark about Goal 18. Uh, I have to stress to everybody that these goals were negotiated last year by world leaders, and I think it would be difficult to reopen the negotiation. But this commission has an opportunity to put connectivity right at the center of all the sustainable development goals. And in my remarks now, which will be brief, I'm going to use five headings. Each begins with the word P, and uh, I hope that this will be helpful to you as you move into the leave no one behind part of the discussion. I'd like to pay special tribute to Matt Granid for the work that he personally and GSMA have been doing. I had the good fortune to go to Mobile World Congress in Barcelona earlier this year and uh, to see the energy with which all the operators are bringing to this issue of connectivity for all. So the first P is plan. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with its 17 goals and 169 targets is the plan for the future of the world's people, the planet for prosperity, for peace and for partnerships. There's never been a plan agreed by world leaders before. And it's really important that we understand that there's also no other plan around right now. This is the one. And so even if there are features of it that you find a little bit tricky, like the number of goals or perhaps the spread of the targets, it's, I think, best that we recognize that it's a universal plan. It applies to every single nation and every community in every nation. It's indivisible in that the leaders who agreed it said don't split it up, split it up into little pieces. And most important, it's interconnected in that particularly with issues like health or climate, what happens in one nation has huge influence on what happens in other nations so it can only be addressed by nations and their people working together. So this is the plan. It's a tricky plan to implement, but it's the one that we have to work on. Number two, participation. Second word beginning with P. The reality is that this plan, when it's followed, will lead to a just, fair, and secure world. But that will only work if everything and everywhere and everyone are connected in a way that enables all to take part in the implementing the plan. We've heard examples already, and I think it bears re repetition that whether we are after improving education or improving health, access to finance or improving democracy, local government and national government services, small and medium enterprises, improving agriculture or early warning for disasters, connectivity is vital. And we have so much evidence of this in the recent past that I think we should just take it for granted. It applies to every single one of the sustainable development goals, every single facet of human existence. So participation is key, and it's only possible if people are connected. Part three, partnership. We've learned in recent years that strides and improvements are greatest when different stakeholders find common interest and work together. And it's blindingly obvious to everybody here but it really is only a recent experience that we would have national presidents sitting with chief executives of large multinational companies, sitting with international organizations like the ITU, 
and sitting with key leaders from civil society and also uh, the uh, creative community. This kind of multi-stakeholder working has proved to be enormously effective in many areas. The one I'm most familiar with is health, where we've seen transformations in the last 15 years. Sitting on my left, Irina Berkova of UNESCO has championed partnerships for education that have been transformative as well. Let us recognize the value of this particular partnership, but also appreciate what it brings. Number one, shared understanding and trust, perhaps the most valuable variable of all. Number two, a willingness to make commitments to each other for which there is shared accountability. And number three, a preparedness to review progress together. The Commission has done a lot, can do more, and it's through that spirit of trust and mutual accountability that results happen. My fourth P is proposition. I'd like to make to you all a proposition. This is the Broadband Commission meeting together in the era of the Sustainable Development Goals. Please, everybody in the, around this table, commit to doing everything possible to their implementation. I would like to suggest that of all groups working in support of the SDGs, you probably individually and collectively have the greatest power at your fingertips to make a difference. Please commit. Secondly, please ensure that everybody everywhere is connected, but with content that has value to them. And number three, please try to do everything you can to work for gigabit speed for all so that everybody is connected as quickly as everybody else. One of the big side effects of this will be an incredible supply of big data. And what we've learned in the UN over the last few years is that big data is such a valuable resource, we have to use it. We cannot and must not ignore the potential for big data to help us deal with mass movements of population, outbreaks of disease, episodes of hunger, and acute needs. So let's recognize that big data, the outcome of this revolution, is also an important asset. Within my proposition comes a commitment to full citizen engagement, because it is through that engagement that democracy works. Last, final P, potential. In my own experience, having watched the impact of connectivity in health, in food and agriculture, in nutrition, in education, I have become convinced that it is now an essential part of what being human is all about. As was just said by one of the new commissioners, it's essential infrastructure, this connectivity. And I'd like to suggest to you all finally that we have a moral responsibility to ensure universal connectivity at all times because that is essential for the future of what being human really is. Thank you very much. Thank you.